A lot can change in almost 30 years of gaming, but a good platformer is forever. Initially released as Wonder Boy 3 in 1989, it's been recreated in painstaking detail for modern systems by developer Lizard Cube. And while the Dragon's Trap definitely shows its age, thanks to a great foundation and some visual upgrades and functional improvements, it also has a few wonders left to show us. Gameplay will be familiar to anyone who ever picked up a Metroid or Castlevania game before 1995. Your character, the titular Wonder Boy, or in a nice bit of inclusiveness, Wonder Girl, fights their way through several areas connected via a central hub stabbing a hodgepodge of classic gaming monsters like snakes, crabs, and ghosts to collect new equipment and reach a boss, in this case ridiculously costumed dragons. Defeating these dragons will transform you into different creatures with various useful abilities, such as a mouse that can climb walls or a fishman that can swim, which then allows you to reach new areas and stab differently colored snakes and crabs. Oh, and ninjas. It was the 80s, let's not overanalyze it. Wonder Boy's updated art style is somewhere between a hand-drawn sketch and a Disney movie, which works well given the fantastical setting. The characters all exude cartoonish personalities that fit well into the ridiculous world, and each environment is beautifully rendered and possesses a unique feel and implied backstory beyond what was once a generic jungle or desert. This is especially evident when swapping back and forth from the modern style to the retro mode, which even reverts the orchestral soundtrack back to chiptune and allows you to experience Wonder Boy as it was initially released. It's a cool feature, one that demonstrates the development team's love of the original game. This devotion to the source material can be a double-edged sword, though. While an incredibly faithful recreation, it could have benefited from a few simple mechanics that have become somewhat standardized over the past 30 years. Forcing us to grind for randomly dropped items, for instance, becomes tedious, and it's frustrating that I'm not able to purchase them in shops, especially since I only need them to reach one boss fight. I realize that it's an issue that may have helped extend playtimes in the 80s, but it becomes annoying in 2017. That said, I had just as much fun during my six or seven hour playthrough of The Dragon's Trap as I did with many of its contemporary counterparts. While its antiquated roots caused some minor frustrations, the foundational combat and exploration is still engaging and fun after 30 years. For more on old school platformers, stick with IGN.